Welcome to where I find my ships. Today we have something truly epic. Finally got my hands on the very best version of the Valentin that can spawn in Starfield. Now this ship has a higher value than the Narwhal, which is considered the most expensive ship to purchase in all of Starfield which apparently Google is a big fat liar because the Reef 3 is more expensive. But regardless, whatever the most expensive ship is, this ship might be even more because it is valued over 500,000. Obviously, you can't purchase this ship, but the fact that it has a higher value than the most expensive ship in the game gives you an idea of how crazy this ship is. We'll do some comparisons against other ships at the end of the video to see which one do have the best stats overall. And guess what? This ship even has much better stats than the UC Vista, which is often considered one of the best ships you can get that's not from a vendor, which is going to make this version of the Valentine probably the best class C ship that you can get your hands on and modify because it's going to be much cheaper, have better stats, better gear. So it's just an overall great starting ship if you're looking to upgrade. It's going to be way cheaper overall when compared to purchasing the Narwhal. So this is truly an epic ship and we're going to get into where I found it, what it's like boarding it, the bounty cost, the registration cost, and we're going to look at some of the components and everything you need to know so you can try get this ship and just get one of the best overall ships in all of Starfield at a fraction of a cost compared to other ships. So buckle in ladies and gentlemen, because we're going on a journey. And first things first, what are the perks you need to be able to get this ship? Okay, so the perks you're gonna need, you're gonna need your piloting rank four, so you can pilot class C ships. I'm also gonna say that you possibly may need your starship design rank four. Otherwise, you might not get access to fly this ship, but please let me know if you can fly this ship without your rank four starship design. Again, because all the components are rank four on this ship. So you may need this, but I'm not 100% certain. And the only reason I'm suggesting this is because in previous ship videos, people have mentioned that they haven't been able to get access to ships, even having rank four piloting. So there seems to be something here where people can't access ships for certain reasons, still haven't figured it out. But I just want to put this as a suggestion just in case. But hopefully after this video, we'll have enough people to comment and let me know if they had any issues capturing this ship without Starship Design Rank 4. In truth, I don't think you need this, but again, just a suggestion. Final perk you'll need is you'll need your targeting control system. You only need at least Rank 1, because that way we can target the grav drive and we can target the engine, disable the ship so we can dock with it. And these are the only perks you'll need to be able to get this ship. Now, where to find the Valentine? This ship is a random spore across the whole galaxy. And this is why it becomes tricky to get because it can spawn in so many different places and it also can spawn as a different ship. The last Valentine I found was a Supreme Class B ship. I'll have a little pop up uh, top right if you do want to check that out. And I found that somewhere else. But the best and most likely place you're going to find this particular one is going to be in the Masada system. So to get to Masada, you're going to need a ship with at least a jump distance of greater than 20, say 23 light years. As you can see here, the closest planet is 22.8 light years away. So make sure you're in a ship that can jump at least 23 light years. And it might be the case that you have to jump from one planet to the other just to get there. So you might have to go from, you might have to go from Primera to Hyla, to Delta, Perineon, and then to Masada. So once you can get to Masada, where are we gonna find the Valentine? So for me, I found this version of the Valentine on Masada 5C. Just in the orbit, because we're taking this ship over by force, by piracy, we will be finding the ship only in orbits. I don't think you can ever find it on a planet landed, but hey, who knows? It's a big place, so maybe you can. But here's the kicker. Because it's a random spawn, technically you could find this version of the Valentine on any of these moons and even some planets. And then technically you could find the Valentine on any other system I would say like above level 65, for example. But that's why this is a bit tricky and it might take some time because it's not a for sure thing. It's because I found Valentine on Masada 5C doesn't mean you will, but it's just a good place to start. And at least we know for certain that it does spawn in this system. So it's a good place to start and you might just have to jump around from Masada 5C to Masada 6A and just jump around until you can find Valentine to spawn. And how will you know it's the Valentine? Well, the Valentine always has that classic guy singing that song. I was a rover and a rambler. I 
And as soon as you hear that, I would definitely be saving the game. Just in case anything goes wrong, you want to be able to jump back to this point. So you can always ensure that you get this ship once you've found it. Now, how do you know if you found the right one? Well, you're looking for a Valentine that is at least level 72. I don't know if it goes any higher. It very might well. And then obviously just getting close to the ship and having a look and making it sure it looks similar to this. Also, keep in mind, I'm level 75. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it spawning, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this when I was a much lower level. So it should be fine. And once you've saved it, you can start to engage the ship. Now, for me, I wanted to get as close as possible. I'd just been in a couple of battles, so my ship wasn't all set up perfectly for this. But it worked out because my auto turrets were on a lower damage. So I got really close and now I'm going to try target the grav drive and the engines very quickly just so we can capture the ship as quick as possible without it getting away because I really wanted to get this ship without having to muck around too much. So we're able to get the lock on. So very quickly able to disable the engine and the grav drive and then we're just going to dock. Keep in mind to dock you just press R when you're close enough to the ship once you're docked now it's time to raid the ship now unfortunately this is a civilian ship so we are just going to be stomping on some level one crew members i don't know if there's a diplomatic way to do this i don't think so but i think the only way you can do is just by piracy so yeah we're just going on a murder spree and obviously you rack up uh like 1500 credits per crew member or something ridiculous like that so clearing the bounty on this is quite substantial but the rewards for getting this ship is just unreal. So it's definitely worthwhile in the end. And I'll go through the exact cost of registering and how much the bounties are shortly. They're sort of all scattered. They don't really come to you. They'll kind of cower and hide away. So you'll have to go find them. Once the crew's gone, you can go check, see if you got anything cool in the cargo or the captain's locker. Well, I actually got a pretty cool jetpack in this. So you may get lucky as well. This is a pretty decent jetpack. So double whammy. Once we've all cleared the ship, we can get into the captain's seat and we can finally look at the stats of the ship. Now, keep in mind, if you have too many ships, you can delete your ships. I'm sure you've worked that out now. But if you do need to delete a ship, make sure you do. And then you'll be able to sit in the pilot seat. And here it is, the Valentine. Bring your attention to the value. The value at the bottom is over 500,000, which is an incredible amount. Everything on this ship, all the weapons, engines, reactor, grav drive are all rank 4 ship design required. So it's all the top tier stuff that you can get. It even has a better shield than my current ship. It has one of the best or the best reactor in the game, I think. It's got nearly max grab drive. It's got very reasonable weapons, all only four bars from being completely maxed out. The engine's the only place where it lacks a bit, but with an upgrade, that's sorted. So you're looking at one of the best platforms to mod because it's already got such good stats. It's an absolute weapon. Now let's go through the bounty and the registration. Okay, so to register this bad boy, it's almost 70k just for the registration, which sounds like a lot, but when you look under the hood, it is absolutely worth it. But we do also then have to consider what it's going to cost to pay off the bounty. And that's no joke either. So to pay the bounty, because we've had to kill so many innocent people, it's going to cost a lot. So the United Colonies bounty at about 65,000. Then you got to clear your criminal record. So you're at a total loss of about 72,000, which is a lot. So you're roughly looking at like 140,000 to get this ship ready to fly around the galaxy, which sounds like a lot. But again, you're going to save a lot in the end because you save so much on the upgrades. Let's look at some of the components now. Now, looking at this ship's components and modules, we have these excellent weapons that require rank four starship design, and they're actually really, really good. No auto turrets. But these weapons are absolute monsters. You can upgrade them and you can just leave them because they're that good. Obviously, we got this amazing shield. It's what one of the best shields you can get. Then the engines. The engines are a bit average, but you'll be able to upgrade these with a few changes. Then you've got this insane J52 Gamma Grav Drive. That's one of the best as well. And then the most interesting component, and I'd love to hear from the shipbuilders, is the SF40 Sheared Flow Reactor. Because this has got to be almost one of the best reactors because it gives you 40 which is kind of nuts it means pretty much all components like all the major components are all rank 4 starship design which is pretty rare to find on a ship that you can just pick up it's just got all these extra little details it's just fantastic what an awesome ship i really like it i don't know what do you guys think i think it's wicked and it's going to be so mad to mod this and it looks quite easy to mod obviously the only downside is you're going to need starship design for but still, it's awesome. Okay, now let's compare it to some of the other ships that you can buy. 
First, we're heading on to Neon City. Then we're going to head over to Tayo Astroneering and we're going to check out the Narwhal. Now, the Narwhal is a very expensive ship. Depending on what perks you have, this could be all the way up to like 400 and 50,000 or something like that. So it's a very expensive ship. Google seems to think it's the most expensive ship in the game, but it's not to me or it's not for me. But you can see here, it doesn't have the best reactor stats. It has great uh, engine stats though. Definitely top tier engine stats. It's got very good lasers, but you can see how this costs so much more. I mean, we've spent, you know, roughly 140,000 and we get a ship with very good comparable stats that will be way cheaper to upgrade and we'll have a much better ship than this. So it's just, it's a bit, bit crazy. And then we'll have a look at the reef because the reef is way more expensive. Now the reef has amazing stats. It's actually a really solid ship. But the only thing that we can say that we have better stats on is that we have a third weapon, which is not too bad. But again, this ship is <laughs> going to cost you an arm and a leg. Sell your soul to the devil because it costs so much money. Um, unless you're doing some crazy glitches, it's going to be pretty hard to get this ship. And that's why this is such a good option again, because we're going to get an amazing ship so much cheaper than anything that you can buy from any of the stores. So it really highlights just how awesome this Valentine version is. Lastly, we'll head over to Aquila. We'll look at some of the ships. So, but the main one we want to look at is the Stronghold. So the Stronghold's favored by a lot of people to upgrade and to use. But again, we're getting much better ships with way better stats. I mean, the Valentine pretty much dumps, dumps all over this in terms of cost. We have better weapon stats. The only benefit that the Stronghold has has one bar better shield. So what you're getting is an absolute bargain. But yeah, I hope you got something out of this. Please let me know what you think or how you went. Did you get it? Did you find it? Really like hearing from you all and really appreciate your support. Thanks so much. And I'll talk to you next time. Peace. Oh, and please consider liking and subscribing. Peace.